Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Krause. Hi, we're back. We have many more questions. We're only halfway through all the questions we have for this week, so we should probably get to them, right? We should, but before we run out, head over to patreon.com slash bumblecast, ko-fi.com slash bumblecast, or become a YouTube member and give us more questions so that we never run out. <laughs> At the rate we're going, we won't. We won't. Uh, oh, man. We would be reach the end of our lives. We'll be on our deathbeds. Our biggest regret will be, oh, we never finished the questions. We never answered all the questions. <laughs> Uh, all right first one up is from noni hey quick question for starline if he's not too busy uh starline do you have retractable teeth like donkey kong goodness i never even checked just a moment let's see how (laughs) (laughs) so hey do creepy (laughs) put those things away (laughs) oh if you insist (laughs) and put you away too get out of here oh i'll be back They'll uh, pay for me to be back. You know they will. <laughs> Don't give them any ideas. Nanemiyun has a question. Dear Ian, can we expect any interactions between Sonic and Shadow in Shadow Generations? Breathe if yes. Recite the Bible in Japanese if no. Oddly specific. <laughs> but as with everything, when a, when a game is coming out that I've contributed to, you'll find out yourself when the game comes out. Will Sonic and Shadow interact in a game where they're in the game they're both in? Hmm. I wonder. Hmm. Onyxodon has a question. Ian, I recently watched a video and I saw that you somehow appeared in it, or at least a lookalike. Could you please confirm whether it was you or not? The link to the video is here. Timestamp, 18 seconds. Doesn't that look like Ian? Ah, I don't remember seeing this one, so give me a second. No. (laughs) All right, Onyxodon. You got me. You got me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we have a question for you kyle uh, okay i guess this is my uh <laughs> my my punishment for humoring on nixodon's question isn't it well it seems to be a growing trend of people asking you questions maybe they're getting tired of me yeah uh, well i hope not I don't want to answer. I don't want to answer too many questions. I don't have answers. <laughs> well, you have to answer this one from Pale. They okay. ask timeline question for Kyle. Okay. So, Kyle, mm-hmm. there's been a lot of questions in the fandom about Sonic Prime. Many people believe that there are many inconsistencies that make its canonicity questionable. So, as the lead writer of Life, could you please specify the show's timeline placement? Thanks for the help. Love your work, Kyle. Also, hi Ian. <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, Sonic Prime is the new universe. The new That's the new Sonic universe. Everything now takes place in Sonic Prime. And I, I, I don't mean like all Sonic things. I mean just like all like reality is taking place in Sonic Prime. Okay. Just so, just so you know. Keep that in I'm mind. Taking, you know, I wish you told me this before I submitted <laughs> that last springboard, but all right, I'll revise. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Peacock Queen has a question. How do you think Sonic Knuckles and the others would react if they met a character who acted just like Master Roshi from Dragon Ball? And I mean, act like him in all aspects of his personality. I can't see them acting too terribly different than the Dragon Ball cast. Because Roshi is known for his lasciviousness, we'll say tamely. Uh But he's also, you know, an actual teacher and at times a warrior. So, and for a large part of the latter end of Z, irrelevant. <laughs> Uh-oh. So so as long as he's just being the kind of pranksterish, goofballish, laid back old dude, I imagine everybody'd be pretty chill with him. And then, you know, he would make commentary that I am personally not comfortable highlighting right here in the show, and he would probably rightfully get a Pico hammer to the face. <laughs> and no one would blame Amy. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, or he'd get uh, he'd get cooked, and no one would be- mm-hmm. blame Blaze. Or Rouge would just play into it and give him a heart attack, and then he would die and have to answer to King Yama, and nobody would blame her. <laughs> well, that problem solved itself. <laughs> Question from Quazzle J: What would Tails think of Proto Man refusing repairs? 
I would drive him crazy. Yeah. Like, you need to function. You, I can do the repair. If you don't trust Dr. Light, I'll do it. You trust me, right? I don't know right? who you are. Why not me? <laughs> Come on. I don't know you, kid. Get out of here. You you need this for you. Let me help you. Help me help you. No, I'm not being clinging and insistent. Come back here. <laughs> Why do they all have teleporters? <laughs> And he's gone. And we got one from Rabbit Haver. Team Dark has to take a flight on commercial airlines for some reason. When the flight attendant says, please turn off your devices, are Rouge and Shadow required to turn Omega off? How long is this flight? 12 hours. Entering standby mode while you have to stay awake. LOL. <laughs> flight mode. It's a miracle he even got by TSA. I mean, how does that work? <laughs> uh, he has, like, all of the weapons. Do you want to try to take them? No. Sir, what is the purpose of your carry-ons? Destroy Eggman robots. Anything else? No. All right, you're clear. <laughs> L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O. <laughs> 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 These are not weapons. They are medical devices. <laughs> In what way are they medical? <laughs> For ending it is my emotional support flamethrower. <laughs> For ending lives. <laughs> he just walks through the metal detector. He just like knocks it over, <laughs> smashes it under his feet. <laughs> Oops! Did I do that? L O L O L O L. Here's one from Reckons. Oh no, Eggman trying to take over again, and the only ones around to stop him are Team Cat. Big Blaze and Honey must all work together to save the world. Obviously, Blaze could solo this job, but what is their team dynamic like, and how do the three get along with each other? This would be really fun. Yo, yes. <laughs> yes, it would absolutely be. This is a fun dynamic, because you've got Honey being the, you know, peppy, happy, vivacious leader of the group. By proxy, at least. You know. Oh, okay. She, she would she's take, got the initiative. She would she's take, got the moxie. She would take the lead role? All right. I mean, Blaze is there, like, obviously has a greater authority, but Honey isn't going to let her get a word in edgewise. I mean, true. But she's out there, you know, saving lives and beating up the bad guys, and Blaze can appreciate that, so she'll follow her lead. That's fine. You know, she's happy to back her up, and Big's just happy to help his friends, and you got <laughs> Honey to set up all the one-liners for big to respond to in that hilarious deadpan way. And <laughs> they just absolutely wreck stuff. It would be great. That'd be a fun team. Yes. You got the fire princess, the fashionable fighter and a literal deity all on one team. I think they'll be fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the fishing deity. Yes. <laughs> the God of fishing. <laughs> yes. I would love to see this. Ah, what could have been. Anyway, Romero R. has one last question before we take a break. How do you think Shadow and Silver would deal with their own lovesick admirers, similar to how Amy used to be like? Would the two hedgehogs look towards Sonic with advi on advice on how to hide oneself? What advice would Amy give to these girls, and why would these girls like Shadow and Silver? Okay, these are like four different questions. I mean, technically, yes. It's all part of one scenario, to be fair. But I, yes. I know, I know, I know. But we really need to stop stacking these linked <laughs> combos together. <laughs> Mr. Flynn over here being the combo breaker. Combo breaker. <laughs> well, I'm breaking hearts as well, I guess. So. Yep. And blasting I mean, farts. Shadow's, Shadow's pretty straightforward. He's just not going to engage like said admirer appears and confesses their affections and he just teleports away like not even acknowledgement <laughs> and they think he's so dreamy because he's playing so hard to get and amy's like no no listen i've been through this i've seen hard to get that's not hard to get that's rejection and sonic's just kind of off to the side not saying anything and amy just shoots him a look <laughs> silver's just absolutely f flattered you know gosh someone really likes him that way well I, he doesn't know who they are but that's really nice of them and you know he's just gonna make sure that he you know does his best if they think he's that cool of a hero he's just gotta be that cool of a hero completely missing the point that you know he's not around for that other person because he's out being a hero well there you go <laughs> uh in her present mindset i imagine amy would try to advise 
temperament on their parts. Like, don't come on too strong. Trust her on this. <laughs> They're very independent hedgehogs. Let them do their thing and, you know, let them come back around to you. And they're like, did that work for you? And she kind of goes, sort of. And Sokka goes, what do you mean, sort of? And Amy goes, you know what I mean. And Sokka's like, no, I really don't. And he's like, and that's why we are what we are. And Sokka goes, I'm so confused right now. <laughs> I don't even know what we are. <laughs> but what we are here on the Bumblecast is right on the edge of a break. Stick around for a couple of patron-sponsored ads. This episode is sponsored by Speed Radio, a bi-weekly podcast playing through nearly every single Sonic the Hedgehog game commercially released, analyzing how the series evolved and changed throughout its 30-plus year run. They go in-depth and chat about the development history and mechanical innovations and level-by-level -level breakdowns of each game, with their own sense of humor sprinkled throughout. Speed Radio is available wherever podcasts can be found and through their website, speedradio.fireside.fm, for those who wish to download the episodes directly. This ad is sponsored by Daniel H. He'd like to introduce you to Miss Kelsey Reed. She's an ambitious local filmmaker, actor, with dreams of starting her own YouTube studio. He's seen what she can do with a little budget and can't wait to see what she'll do with an even bigger one. Attached is a link to her GoFundMe page. She's got a little money in, but could use a little bit more. He's eternally grateful for those people who have believed in her and would like to boost those that have dreams too. Give the link a read over if you please, and he thanks you for your time. Link will be in the description of the episode below. We're back, and we have a question from Scurvy Pirate Dog. It's official. Hollywood has run out of ideas. So a big Hollywood Shh, producer yeah. so a big Hollywood producer approaches you both. He says that we're gonna make a bumblecast, the movie. And here's the thing Ian gets to decide the story. And Kyle gets to decide what A-list celebrity will portray Ian, while Ian gets to decide what A-list Hollywood celebrity will portray Kyle. What's the movie about, and what actors portray you both? Uh, so it has to be a faux biopic like the Weird Al show, Weird Al movie. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which revolves around how we saved the free world <laughs> as super spies by answering riddles in the form of the Bumblecast questions. Like, okay. There's ancient temples, there's, you know, a hacker scene, there's some, a complete ripoff of Die Hard 3, you know, that kind, of, that kind of thing. Yeah. And just the way we answer questions is how we, you know, disarm bombs and stop trains and save puppies <laughs> out of trees and that kind of thing. <laughs> you are played by Dave Batista. Okay. <laughs> And you are played by Jeff Bridges. Excellent. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> the Bumble King abides. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yep, yep. Ian, you write Shatterong. Well, that's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we could have gone Jack Black and Chris Pratt, but no. <laughs> I'm being asked if we make cameos. Yes. Yes. And like full makeup as each other. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I'll Dave. I'll be Dave Bautista. That's pretty cool. I'll ba <laughs> I'll, I'll Bautista bomb on screen. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's one from Sylvia the Lynx. What would the clothing situation be for a cisgendered male who develops gynecomastia, a.k.a. an increase in breast tissue in males? Are they suddenly expected to wear shirts, or is the expectation of wearing shirts, rather than the choice to wear shirts, strictly a gender roles thing? You know, I actually know someone who has this condition. Oh, yeah? And uh, he wears baggy sweaters all the time because it doesn't qualify as a kind of disability, so he can't get elective surgery for it. Mm -hmm. And him but really cool dude um i wish him the best i don't i don't know if he has managed to take care of that particular issue it's been a long time since i've seen him and i don't want to call him out by name because i know he's self-conscious about it so you know wherever you are buddy hope you're doing well uh as for this specific question in application to sonic characters i don't know because i'm certain that will never be addressed yeah 
I, I mean, maybe they're thinking like if they were, if they may have had, if we were creating their own character who had something like that. Well, if you're creating your own character, do what you want. I mean, yeah, you, know, you don't, you don't have to abide by franchise rules. Do what makes you happy. Yeah. Yeah. And if you are more comfortable portraying the character one way than the other, it's your character. You do you. There you go. And Soccer Cop has a question. You tell different Sonic characters about the blue, blue sky, but all they can see is just a yellow lemon tree. How does each of the main characters react to that disappointing situation? Okay, so I saw this one. I'm like, all right, I'm missing a reference. Google, what are you, what is this? And I got the song. Okay. So I listened to the song. That did not help my context at all. I have no <laughs> idea what that bloody song is about. And I have no idea how to apply it to Sonic. <laughs> I'm just thinking like, blue, blue skies from Daytona. Blue, no, no, blue no, no, skies, no. I see. But does, there's nothing in that song about yellow lemon trees. No, it, hold on. <laughs> Why is it blind? <laughs> hmm. Where did that go in my history? Oh, come on now. Right, it's a song by Fool's Garden called Lemon Tree. Okay. Unless there's another song that has those lyrics and I'm confused. I mean, it's possible, but I'm pretty sure that's it. But I listened to it. I don't get it. I don't know how to apply it. I y- you stumped me on this one, Soccer Cot. You win. <laughs> I am bamboozled. <laughs> I think this is just a we we are increasing <laughs> Ian's boomer rating episode by episode. <laughs> <laughs> the older Ian gets, the more boomer he becomes. <laughs> Look, if I reach the boomer level where it becomes your problem, not mine, then it's time to drag me out behind the shed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I admit my own ignorance here. This is my failing. <laughs> I think that's what makes it funnier. <laughs> Either hey, it, if I'm gonna, if I'm twisting in the wind, as long as it entertains people, let it, let's do the twist. All right. <laughs> There's your song reference. <laughs> Either way, Tails doesn't want those damn lemons. <laughs> He's going to find a way to burn your house down with the lemons. <laughs> it's true. All right, Sonic Swordfighter has a question. Could we get a sample of some Mephilus ASMR? Okay. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> spoiler 1001 has a question how much of rotor telling fiona not to use a gun was him not trusting her with one given his history of using such weapons as well as most of the freedom fighters you know we've reached a point in my life where i'm kind of glad i don't have to fix these problems anymore <laughs> it's all over it, it was at least at this point or it was poor editorial management of the narrative. It was poor remembrance by the writing crew. I don't even remember who wrote that particular scene, you know, so I can't lay it at anybody's feet. I don't have to make sense of this anymore because that continuity is done. We've moved on. It doesn't matter anymore. And that's okay. Yes. Sure. It'd be nice to bring some of those characters back though, you know, at least in a new way. No, but well, nah, nah. Steph cube has a question. Next year marks 20 years since Blaze's debut in Sonic Rush. Would you like a year of Blaze with new content for her, such as a game, a special comic, having her own VTuber and appearing on Tales Tube? Yes. Um, yeah. More Blaze is never a bad thing. Were we, were, were we not supposed to want this? I, I'm confused by this question. Like, I thought the answer would be an obvious yes. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really, I mean, that's all I want. The Cyberspace Coco has a question. Silver is sometimes marketed as one of Sonic's rivals, like in the Rivals games and in Generations where he's a rival fight along with Metal and Shadow. However, when looking at Knuckles and Shadow, it's easy to see there is an ideological clash between them and Sonic. Sonic and Knuckles have the whole freedom versus responsibility thing, and Sonic and Shadow differ in their methodology. However, heroic good boy Silver just seems like another of Sonic's friends. What makes Silver one of Sonic's rivals? In my head, at least, it comes down to Sonic is an established and accomplished hero. And Silver, comparatively, is not. He still sees himself as someone who is 
growing and learning and trying to achieve greatness where Sonic is just kind of chill about it and just does, you know, day needs saving. He's going to do what well, silver still stresses over it. So there, I feel like there's that rivalry where silver wants to be the same kind of badass that Sonic is where Sonic has already reached this epiphany of he is what he is. He doesn't need to measure himself up against anybody else. And so there is that challenge between the two of them. There's also the aspect of silver kind of continuously being led into scenarios where he feels like he's at odds with Sonic, which are not necessarily founded. And then they're more just like adversaries than actual rivals. And that's why I prefer to think of it as more. He aspires for greatness where Sonic has already accepted that, you know, greatness is within your own self. Mm -hmm. I think it's just because silver keeps trying to put Sonic's head through a table or put, I'm... A table through Sonic's head to be actually. To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or both. I mean, why not? <laughs> Here's one from the oddly Roger. Following up from my last question, Nicole is now operating on a subscription model. What would she demand as payment and how would Sally and the Freedom Fighters cover it every month? <sighs> it's hard to imagine Nicole demanding anything of her friends. <laughs> what about friendship? How do you quantify that? I don't know. You did not hang out with me <laughs> the required amount. <laughs> Shutting down. What about... Oh, what we about, really need to know if those missiles are inbound or not. What if the payment is a kiss on the cheek from Sally? Well, they asked about all the freedom fighters. and Oh, well, I mean... we want to make them all very close friends. Um, <laughs> maybe she just wants to make sure they're all doing their best. So they have, like, personal goals. You know, you have to reach this many steps. You have to say, hang out this much time with your friends. You have to <laughs> spend this much time away from the computer, rotor, rest your eyes, that sort of thing. Very, very innocuous, small goals. You have to accept all of Nicole's cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and our last question on this episode comes from Twilord. In an attempt to soften Shadow while keeping him on tense terms with Sonic, Sega decides that Sonic got Dark Rider destroyed. Question for both of you, especially Kyle, is, despite yourselves, do you find yourself siding with Shadow on this grudge? Depends on how the Dark Rider gets destroyed. Like, did Sonic have to throw it into the industrial grinder to save a kitten? <laughs> or was Sonic driving under the influence of chili dogs and rammed it into a light pole? You know, there are degrees of destruction here and culpability. I suppose. You know, did... Sonic managed to do the Akira slide one too many times and the reference finally reached singularity mass and no one can reference that ever again. <laughs> or it just, he did it one too many times and the bike fell apart. The wheels came off. You know, he just paint it blue. I was like, you destroyed it. I can, I can paint it back to black again. No, <laughs> you ruined my ride. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought it was kind of cool and it, it's a very nice shade of blue. Yes, you're right. It is very nice. But you ruined it. <laughs> like wasn't this already just like a gun standard issue bike that you painted black? I don't see your point. Yeah, of course you wouldn't. <laughs> and this is why we are what we are. It's my oh, I'm bike. I'm very confused right now. <laughs> it's my bike. That's really what it's about. See? It's mine. Sure, it's the same as everybody else's, but it's mine. I saw a bike and then I had to paint it black. <laughs> uh, the bike is called Maria. <laughs> oh, no. I ride it forward and I'm never looking back. <laughs> oh, no. Song reference within a song reference. Come oh, on. oh, boy. Wow, this is this is... Wow, so deep. Mm. Oh, no, we, we're definitely within the realm of cringe. So we better just cut our losses. Thank you, everyone who supports the show over patreon.com slash mumblecast, ko-fi.com slash mumblecast, and our YouTube members. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Show respect to other people's motorcycles and vehicles. And we will see you next time on the Bumblecast. We may be bumble cringe, but we are bumble free. <laughs> I see Ian's remains <laughs> all over the ground. <laughs> Bumble Caliente. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> She's fading away into nothingness. <laughs> You've been listening to The Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T-Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at bumbleking.com and kngi.org. Now people are screaming outside. Great. Is this a problem? No, not yet. It's Cassie, apparently. Cassie's out there screaming. No, it's not you, Cassie. No. Uh, children screaming. People screaming. Wait. Okay. Wait. Not trying to kill each other. Yet. yet. Not our <laughs> uh, Saturday. Go it's, home and go- it's play screaming. Go it's home. Children just being loud. Go home and go inside, people. It's like 110 degrees out there. <laughs> Maybe they're screaming because it's 110 degrees outside. (laughs) Get out.